Let's Lost them. Two thirty-five. <clears throat> this is an audio check for Twitch. Yeah. Okay, we're good. We are ready. Oh, you ready? <clears throat> All right. Yep. Th <clears throat> okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 235 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. I'm Haim Cohen. Tom is right there. Hi. He's there. And I mean, dare I ask, what time is it? Uh, it is currently. Uh, twenty twenty dash zero two dash one two t one nine uh, colon one one colon zero seven at uh, negative zero eight colon zero zero. Now is that real or you just make that up? No, no, that is actually the, okay. the real time stamp. So right before the show, we were talking about time, time zones, and time of everything, and 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 how time is really, really hard to explain to people and all this other stuff. But you can join the WhatsApp group and continue it where you can tell us we're wrong and how the bankers only think there's 360 days in a year where most people know that on Feb this, this month, you get an extra day free of rent because it is a leap year. But, you know, like with, with the way 2020 has already shaken out, I'm really depressed that we have another day tacked onto this year already. Like, ho hopefully it gets better, but man, January was rough. February doesn't look to be much better. And adding another day to this, oh, it's like it's like one of those vacations that ends up being really bad. And you're just kind of counting down the days until you can go home. And then you realize your flight got delayed and you're stuck in Ohio. Not that I've ever encountered that. I've never been stuck in Ohio. I guess I uh, count, you, count yourself <laughs> lucky. So... <laughs> Yeah, so we were talking about the different times, and time is one of these really, really hard things to explain and to do and everything else. I'm sure you got that memo that now you have to write 2020 at the end of the year because somebody can just forge the date, which is not a thing, will never be a thing. Or you can do what Tom says, use the ISO standard where you do the year first, and that's how we should all migrate to and just do that. Yep. Use 2020, ISO 8601. 2020... 0212 for February 12th. We are recording this it's, on February 12th. It's perfect. It's the perfect date format because even if you just do a straight up string story, like let's say you have a, a folder full of file names, but they all start with this timestamp, the 2020-02-12. When you sort the list, it's just naturally sorted by the date timestamp. It is perfect in uh, almost every way. Uh, really every way. ISO 8601 is the only way, the only acceptable way to write a date or time. Tell your and friends. You could, and you could always offset by four. It's really, it's easy to look, use your eyes to offset by four. So you, mm -hmm. you get rid of the year and then you see the month. Then if you have to worry, is the month the European way or the American way or whatever way? That's hard too. So like I said, the ISO standard, that I'm I'm all about that. Okay, so our topic today, we wanted to go back to basics. We, I mean, we said that we're going to do this as part of the new year was to talk about malware and antivirus and everything else. Because over the years, I mean, our actual recommendation has not changed. But with all new malware and all new this and every, people say, well, what about this and what about that? No, our our advice is still run solo, no, no antivirus. However, to make sure make sure whatever that windows one security essentials is turned on basically let the operating system at this point handle your virus scanning uh duties yeah well un unfortunately for for everyone the year 2020 did not bring a brand new shift in security paradigms uh, and it did not get rid of all malware as we were hoping and praying uh so yeah you do have to have some kind of protection but the good news is you don't have to buy this stuff anymore you don't have to go download avg or vast or something free you definitely don't have to pay for anything uh windows 10 has got windows defender built right in it gets updates along with everything else and it generally leaves you alone unless something's going you know kind of kind of wonky so yeah windows defender it's great it's free it's built right in just I, leave it turned on it's turned on by default and you're done I mean, I don't remember the last time I got like the definition of a virus on my computer. 
like even in my teenage yeah. years where I was doing bad things, I always had like a bit flip that caused some DLL to not work that caused problems or a driver that got messed up or, or that malware on the other hand that I've gotten, but an actual virus, like I downloaded something and ran it and I did some pretty shady things. But I think human psychology said, hmm, let me, I'm going to look at the comments and see what the comments say or whatever it is. I haven't had, I, like I said, I don't think I've had a virus as long as I can remember. I think the last virus I had was something I downloaded off Kazaa when I was a kid. Um, and that's, that's kind of a blast in the past. If you don't know what Kazaa is, it was one of the earlier uh, like Napster ripoffs that came out after Napster. It was for, it was peer to peer file sharing. So somebody could offer up, you know, whatever MP3 you wanted. Uh, you know, like if you wanted the new Linkin Park album, that was probably on Kazaa. Totally illegal. Uh, but yeah, you know, everyone pirated back in the day and I was no stranger that, to that. So yeah, I, I did get a virus that put all kinds of questionably named files on my file system and gave me just some horrible advertisement pop-ups and Internet Explorer 6, of course. I think I remember re like recently, and I'm saying probably 15 years ago, uh, I, down I did something that caused a recursive folder to be named. So whatever it was, a folder was named recursively through every single part of the file system. Oh, that is but it was painful. A, but I did know my regex and I was able to get, and then I, I did start wiping stuff, but it hit the server. So that took a little bit. That was not fun, but I was able to get rid of it. And I think that's all it did was just recursively uh, insert a folder with some name everywhere. And it, it, it did take a while, but we got rid of it. But the point is an actual virus that does something nastier to your computer. I think we've moved on. I think the hackers moved away from let's see what we can do to how much money we can make from you. So we want to move on to malware and things that slow your computer down by using the cycles. So virus scans, <clears throat> We're going to just say, look, uh, unless your, your, your corporation requires it for whatever reason, I would disable it, uninstall it, because think about what it does. It hooks into your system. So to check things, it has to, and Tom's going to explain this, it has to break SSL. So it has to hook in. It has to be the man in the middle to see all the traffic. It has to, it, it writes that report. We found last week that Avast is selling this data to everything and it generally slows down your system because it has to check everything all the time how many i mean you're going to say well how long I say, well let's take five minutes a day you could have done something five minutes faster okay five and you take it over the course of the year whatever it is you might as well have a backup that if something goes wrong you can just restore from backup and be done with it in three hours rather than lose five to ten minutes every day doing something and it's it's even a little worse than that. It's not just the scan. Like these active uh, virus scanners and, and antivirus programs, anytime you install something or a lot of files are touched or uh, you open up a particularly beefy application that's got a, a lot of files everywhere that's got to pull and load data from, uh, like think about video games, right? You launch a game, it's got to touch a lot of maps and models and logic data and binaries and uh, you know, application uh, DLLs and, and libraries and stuff like that. It generally, antivirus is going to look at a lot of this stuff. And scanning has gotten better. It's gotten faster than it was in the past, but it's still a performance hit. Uh, if you downloaded anything from the internet, that thing is going to be analyzed six ways to Sunday, and it's going to take a while before you can just look at the cat picture you downloaded. Um, and it just isn't worth it anymore. Well, and th then, so you have to scan all that, then it has to update. Then you have the problem of you have to pay for this. So the free yep. ones are free, but you still have to update it with, again, your time. And the paid ones, as soon as the, the paid service ends, you can say, oh, maybe I'll get a month. No, it has to constantly be updated because guess what? The bad guys, this bad, the, the people writing viruses know when these, uh, these updates happen. And so they just push it out the day after that update and you have to wait for the next update. And here's here's kind of the the nail in the coffin for non, we'll, we'll call it third party antivirus, right? Because Windows Defender is great. It's fantastic. Keep it running. It's built into Windows 10. Just don't, don't touch it. It'll keep you safe. Um, but the, the things uh, that's really the nail in the coffin about third party antivirus is the fact that 
this thing has to hook into the, the root of your system, right? It has to get system level, root level permissions to the entire box, meaning it has admin access to everything necessarily, right? Because it has to touch every single file, no matter who downloaded it, no matter who owns it, no matter what kind of permissions are set, it has to get access to read it. So it does. Uh, it also has to have access to clean up stuff, to modify registry entries. Basically, this thing is running as a second <coughs> admin on your computer. If that antivirus program is breached in any way, like let's say a virus finds a little nook or cranny to work its way into that AV program and exploit it, it now has complete control of your system. And there is nothing you can do to get that out without a full wipe. Um, it's quite literally, it would give it rootkit level access to your operating system. And as we've seen, as Google's Project Zero has shown several times in the past, um, AV, the third-party antivirus programs are really, really badly secured. They're awful. They're just the worst, as a matter of fact. They're, the, they're terribly built. They have terrible personal security and they hook into the root of your operating system. So if that thing gets popped, you're done. And again, they're tr again, they're trying to make money, but then you have a psychologically. So you download this and say, oh, I have a virus scan. It's okay to open this file. That's another problem that, that, that I hear people say, oh, I have a virus scan. And you wanna say, no, that's not the point. The point is if you accidentally do that, not on purpose say, hey, I'm gonna to go to the shady site and see it, or I'll download it and then run it through the virus scan. Because again, if I'm developing some sort of virus to do something, I'm gonna lay low and, and see how to bypass it. Like I'm gonna download the virus scan and see how it works to try and bypass it. So, so the psychology of all this is also saying, just be careful of what you're doing. We're not saying don't go to bad places, but when you do, know that you're going to bad places. Know, know exactly how to do and how to protect yourself. So I don't want to go too much more into virus scans. I want to move on to uh, like malware and add-ons, but anything else with virus scans? Well, add-ons is actually a perfect place to go because a lot of these antiviruses are going to try to throw a, a browser extension, either automatically install it into your, your system or um you know try to try to get you to to pull it from the either the mozilla add-ons page or firefox or the chrome web store for google chrome or uh really anything else because a lot of browsers have extensions now uh so browser extensions can do some pretty gnarly stuff uh just like we saw with avast um they can even watch all of your browsing history and sell it off to the highest bidder now again in full transparency Avast has discontinued the jump shot program and they are no longer doing it. But the fact remains that they did. Mm -hmm. Well, look, the, so the virus, so the virus manufacturers, the malware people said, Hey, uh, people are going Chromebooks. They're people, they're getting savvy to automatic updates. How can we do this? And they found the next vector is, well, the other vector was emails, but the next vector was adding add-ons. So they'll say, Oh, go download this or click here to get this. And it would automatically, it would, uninstall in the background. I've gotten some nasty uh, browser extensions. They're fairly simple to get rid of. I don't exactly remember what I did, but it, I mean, if it said, Hey, download this, I'm probably saying no. Uh, it's so I don't know what they're doing, but clearly they're doing some sort of shady unattended installation that gets you, but who knows, but browser extensions are a pain, but the good news is that they can't, I don't know. They, they can't do much once you get rid of them. Like, do they inst they install themselves, but do they leave remnants there? Could they hook in? It depends. Uh -huh. uh, so one of these that I've seen, actually, it's a browser extension. And what it would do is it would constantly throw up like fake flash or other downloads and say, oh, hey, you have to run this EXE. Mm -hmm. This thing is out of date. We're not going to let you see this video because it did have full permission to see what you're browsing, see where you're browsing and modify the contents of any pages you're on. So... If you wanted to check out that cute cat video, then it says update your Flash player, even though the modern web doesn't use Flash anymore and it's dead, um, which is good. Uh, but it could trick users into installing something that's outside of the extension that hooks into your operating system and keeps reinstalling the extension, even after you've gotten rid of it. Uh, I've actually cleaned up a couple of family members' computers that have had exactly that. And it's it's a nasty problem. But most, of, just like you were saying, most of the extensions that are malware, uh, after you get rid of them, after you go through the add-ons menu and click remove, that's all you need to do.
Don't you love the the ones that have customer surveys at the end? You remove it. Yes. Why did you uninstall this? Was it you showing you too many Google searches? <laughs> yeah, I, I love the, those. The most common uh, one that I've seen, and and frankly, if you're if you're if, if ever done tech support for family members, you've probably seen this too, which is the fake search engine, uh, and it's usually quite literally just redirecting Google search into a different page, but it's got ads everywhere, all over the page. And the reason they do that is because by showing ads, they're making just a tiny bit of money. And then by spreading this malware extension everywhere, then you get a bunch of users. And every time they search, they see a bunch of shady ads and you you get paid. Uh, so that's, that's quite literally why they exist. It's... Usually I see them in pairs or in, in triples. I don't usually see like one mal like one bad Chrome extension. Usually somehow whatever they're doing comes in pairs and you have to remember to do that. But like I said, I love that the, they have like a customer service page. Like, how can we make this better? And I, I can see people who are installing it, like actually saying, like, maybe if you didn't show that many ads, <laughs> like they're crowdsourcing maybe. how to keep this going. Maybe if you didn't trick me into installing this, that, that would be good for me. Uh, another way that these can get onto your system, let's say you've got a completely innocuous add-on. Let's mm -hmm. say it's open source. Let's say you know the person that wrote it. It's super well trusted. Um, developers got to eat. Like People like money. And a, a lot of super popular add-ons have actually been acquired by some of these big malware vendors saying, hey, we love your extension. We want to we want to give it a future. We want to do enhancements to it. Will you sell us this extension so we become the new owners of it for X thousands of dollars? And open source person over here that that likes money and that needs to feed their family is like, yes, yes, I, I wrote this. It has 10,000 users. And yes, please, here's the add on. Uh, I would like some cash. And what happens is they then turn around and change the extension and turn it into malware. So something that was perfectly innocent has now become something entirely different after it gets acquired. Now, with that said, both uh, Google Chrome and Firefox do vet the asterisk. They do try to vet the extensions. It's, yeah. it's, but again, you want to be careful. So my first thing is if you don't need an extension, please don't install it. Like yeah. ask yourself, why do I need this? What is it gonna do for me that I can't do somewhere else? I look at browser extensions as little dock icons. Remember it's like, oh, the real player will preload so you can always get it faster or whatever app would be would preload or they'll give you your own printer app rather than using the system default. They're just li lining up either your menu bar or your title bar with all these things that you may not need. With that said, I'm just looking, I have LastPass and I have uh, uBlock Origin on Chrome right now. And Google Docs offline, I don't know why I have that, but that's what I have. I don't have any that I don't need. And remember, they do take up, they do use memory. They do run in a, ba in a background Chrome task or a Firefox task. So if you don't need it, uninstall it. Yeah, especially the ones that will look at every page you're on. Now, some of them require that, right? Like uBlock Origin is an incredible ad blocker. It's it's just amazing. Um, they, they have honestly done incredible work with it, but it does necessarily have to look at every single page you're on to be able to detect where the ads are and get rid of them. So that makes sense. But let's say you have an extension that, that just does like one thing and one thing only. Does it really need access to every single web page? Like Google Docs offline. Does it need access to every single web page? No, and that's why it doesn't ask for it. Uh, but if you've installed an add-on for one particular site and it wants to see all of your browsing data, that should be a red flag. Well, I'm not even saying that, but yes, you have that. I'm just saying <laughs> with all these extensions, like Chrome, oh, download all these extensions. The problem is they're all apps. They're all whatever they want to call themselves progressive. They're not progressive web apps, but whatever they want to call themselves these days, they're still taking cycles on your computer. And if to yep. change some functionality of the page or to do something you can do manually, maybe that's the right answer. Like instead of having a Chrome app that will uh, that will open a new doc, maybe you just do docs.new or something like that or have a link to a new doc and, and do it that way. So with the extensions, malware people are finding ways that that's how they're going to get in. The good news is if it's just extensions removing them, 
doesn't require like a wipe of your system. At least I don't think a wipe of your system or anything like that. You can just (laughs) remove them. (coughs) So, yeah. And I, I love browser extensions. I really do. Uh, But I have slimmed down my use of extensions to a a very coarse set. I think I've got three extensions right now. Uh, Ublock origin, LastPass, and HTTPS everywhere. Um, And I, I think those are, those are good. I had yeah, no problem with this. I had HTTPS everywhere, but everything is now HTTPS. So yeah, when yeah. I type in sites, no HTTPS everywhere would break things. Which, by the way, HTTPS anywhere is run by the EFF. They're excellent, and Privacy Badger is another one. But it does break some functionality that you have to be aware. So if you ever get like a quirky error, like a site's not loading or whatever it is, you got to remember. Oh, HTTPS everywhere is pushing HTTPS, which all these little different things. Same with the uBlock. Some websites won't work because the ad blocker is on or things like that. So you got to remember, hey, that they're installed. <laughs> yeah, and, and don't don't overlap extension functionality. A, you're wasting cycles, and B, they can kind of interfere with each other. Like, don't have ad block plus and uBlock origin. It doesn't make any sense. Just pick the best one, which is uBlock origin. Mm-hmm. So those are the two big ones. Now, uh, if you're running Windows, people like to install malware. Oh, we got to talk about the phones, but just a ma- like anti-malware bytes or super anti-spyware, e- ESET. I don't even remember the name. CC Cleaner. Yeah, uh, CC Cleaner ESET was... Got, yeah, there's ESET and Nob32, <clears throat> um, which got great reviews back <clears throat> when, when antivirus mattered. Well, spyware, uh, like I can see a thing. Like they're just checking for... They're, they're checking, but again, <clears throat> with all... With the malware cleaners back back to the desktop, I would do it like I would download it when you need it, run it when you need it, once a year, whatever it is. If if you're worried, if if you're not worried, then there's no problem. If you're running, uh, we, we didn't talk about it. if you're running a Mac, uh, running a Mac, Apple is handling a lot of this stuff. If you're running Linux, it's I don't think you're getting anything to begin with. No, uh, Windows 10, like we. If we didn't say it, we'll say it again. It has done an excellent job of trying to keep a lot of this out. So just running whatever they came with it is is you'll be fine for the most if part. If you're running like, if you're running a Chromebook, you don't have to yeah. worry about this stuff. Like don't please don't install any <clears throat> antivirus add-ons. Just please please don't. <laughs> Google Google is going to take care of their browser just fine alone. And then finally, phones. So. So you see Android phones now. Hey, uh, we're running antivirus. Download Lookout or whatever it is. And what Google has said, if you don't check the unknown sources box, which I think because is locked by default. So I don't think any phone you buy from the carriers, it should be it should be automatically turned off, and you have to manually turn it on. And the Amazon App Store was the really famous one that forced you to do it, and now the game. Um, Fortnite requires you to do it basically saying you have to do you have to do this and we've spoken about that so basically you can download stuff from weird sites if you don't do that everything goes to the play store and going through the play store google vets it yeah things slip through and everything else but google goes through it and they they do uh, both of them the same with the app store does a really good job protecting you what these virus uh, scan manufacturers do is they use the exact same definitions. So you don't even need to do it because it's already being done for you on Google servers rather than on your phone. Yeah, the, the only thing any Android antivirus is going to give you, because let's let's dig into how Android apps actually work and, and most phone apps for for sake of argument. They're actually little sandboxed apps. They they get access to their little container. They've got their own little storage. And other than a couple little exceptions, like reaching out to uh, like local storage, like where you keep your downloads or other things that they ask for, they generally can't go outside that box. Now, what Lookout does is it looks at the list of apps you have installed on your phone and it goes, oh, this one might be dangerous. It's literally a blacklist. It's They literally keep a list of bad software and they look through that list. Do you know what does that by default already? The Android operating system. Any modern Android operating system has already got that whitelist and blacklist. And I can tell you this much, Google updates their definitions way faster and way better than Lookout ever will. Um, I don't want to make fun of Lookout because I actually do like Lookout, but in general, these virus scan apps. Lookout is the big one. 
they're just they're just worthless it literally cannot run heuristics it doesn't run with the same level of permissions that like a desktop operating system antivirus would there's no way for that application to get root access because on default installs of android from a, a manufacturer from a, a carrier right unless you're installing roms and super su and rooting your phone there is literally no way for the antivirus to get root level permissions to do the things that modern av on a desktop could and does do uh so they're worthless they're absolutely worthless and i mean it's it's kind of worse than worthless because it wastes your battery life so, I mean, one of the things that Lookout does do, but again, it just recreates functionality is, oh, if you lost your phone or has an emergency setting or whatever else. But at this at this point in time, having Google on the latest operating system, they, they've solved this. There's ways to find your phone, find your devices, lock your phone, securely erase your phone, all these, and Google does it natively. And Apple is also doing it, I think, basically natively. So for these reasons, I really wouldn't there's there's no reason there's just there's there's again no reason to install any sort of anti anything on your phone or your computer unless you know exactly that you have something very specific and you know what you're doing and and let's say you really <clears throat> really want fortnite okay check the unknown sources box install just fortnite and then go back into settings. This is super important. Go back into settings and uncheck that box. You can toggle it on, install the one thing you need, and then toggle it off. Just understand that by toggling it on and installing something, you are trusting whatever that endpoint is, right? Yeah. If it's Fortnite, you're fine, right? It's, it's run by a big, giant company. It's a, it's a trusted platform. It's a trusted game. That's totally fine. Don't install weird stuff from shady people and then check the box and assume you're safe, right? Because it literally just prevents installations. Again, and then be and be uh, reasonable about it. Uh, how many downloads does it have? How many five star reports does it have? Read the comments if if you're if you're questioning it. Like, oh, usually things that that trick you are face apps. Face, like they're doing something with your photo or whatever else. We talked about permissions. If it says, if it's a flashlight, why does it need to send text messages? So always be aware with that. And again, and lastly, with the last minute is let's stay updated. We need to stay updated. So all of this is all dependent on the fact that psychologically you're looking at what you're doing and saying, hey, this is probably the right thing or the wrong thing. The second thing you're doing is, is actively being vigilant. But the third thing you're updating. So anytime there's an update, update. Because you can do all this and and forget the update and still get in trouble, and then there's really nothing you can do. So yeah, it's it's actually really easy. Uh, and and on iPhones, Apple tends to vet their store uh, minorly better than Google does. Not not by a ton, but minorly better. Um, and if they discover and they have discovered rogue applications roaming the App Store. When they remove it and they flip that flag that says this is malicious, it is automatically removed from your phone. They they do have a kill switch enabled and they can and do remove apps that violate core policies. And we can discuss whether that's, a, that's legal, not legal, but for the point is they're trying to keep people safe. Again, both Apple and, and Google want to have a platform to say our Play Store, our App Store is the best. It's good. It's not going to get hacked. They, they have a vested interest in keeping that safe. So they rather hear a few First Amendment complaints about, oh, you stole the spammy app from it. But again, think about what you're doing. I, I keep on going back to that. I don't install that many apps. Uh, once you download your core set of whatever apps, you're either installing a game here and there or whatever else. But you're don't go if you're going on a rampage just to install apps, be careful. Just know what you're doing. I, I know it's tempting when you get a new device, especially if it's a new phone with a lot more power. You want to see what it can do. You want to download a bunch of stuff and go crazy. But if you're just testing stuff out, you can just make sure to remove the stuff you don't need later. And, you know, the general uh, cleanliness tip, too. <coughs> and again, with the phones, I've, I've noticed this recently. Everything now is either paid or in-app. If you're getting a free app, ask yourself why it's free. Um, are they giving you one level or something that you can justify? But if it's like, here, play this 10 hour of gameplay game for free with no in-app purchase or whatever it is, ask yourself, what what is it doing? Or if it's like a simple flashlight app, why are you paying for it? 
um, or in-app purchasing it. They're going to let you have downloadable lights or whatever it is. So, so be aware of that. Unfortunately, people uh, developers have to eat, so they will start charging monthly or subscription based, which I'm not a fan of. However, I understand the point. Yep. So, look, I got nothing else on this. Uh, simple, no virus scan. Just be careful. The built-in systems are the best, and just. Just if it doesn't look right, sound right, just stop. You can do a little bit of research before you click, but I, I if just be a little boring. Don't <clears throat> don't just install everything. Just really look at it, and you will probably be fine. And like I said, I haven't heard of too many computer viruses. I hear crypto uh, ransomware, but other than viruses on people's personal computers, I don't. I haven't heard of too many. So we'll leave you with that, and we're gonna go. And uh, if you need advice or want to ask questions about any of this, then uh, join our WhatsApp group and we will be happy to, to talk viruses, antiviruses, crypto, malware, phones, and uh, falsehoods about, uh, about time when it comes to programming. Crypto as in cryptography and not cryptocurrency. Do not come in yes. for cryptocurrency. Yes, we've had so many, so many Bitcoin and altcoin spammers and they just get booted as soon as they advertise. So uh, don't come begging and don't come and advertising. And we're trying to, I'm trying to install WireGuard. So we'll have a VPN episode uh, sooner than later where hopefully I can get WireGuard up and running and explain how I did it because I feel like that's the, that's the new generation of VPN. So anyway, with that said, we will see everyone next week. Bye, everyone. See you, everyone. All right, let me, uh, let me shut off Twitch. We actually have people watching. This is really cool. So somebody we on have Twitter watching and chatting. Some people, somebody on Twitter last week said, "I'm looking for a security podcast." So I put our name, and like ten people started following me. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, I don't know nice. what they correlate to. So I follow on in third on the Twitter account. I just follow them back because I don't really care. So. All right. Well, I'm going to cut the stream.